O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, and stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and our Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another, and our whole life, to Christ our God. To you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Today I want to share with you the Gospel of March 4th. This is the Gospel that reminds us of the Holy Week, starting with the Palm Sunday. The story is the story of the Palm Sunday and the entrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, glorious entrance of our Lord into Jerusalem, into the temple, going to the temple. So as many of you already know, it's about the Lord telling his disciples to go find this donkey and bringing it to him. And as they find the donkey they tell the owner that the master needs it and they bring it to the Lord to sit on and enter into Jerusalem as he enters into Jerusalem many people who were there they take their clothes off and they spread it in front of him on the road and they cut branches from the trees and they also put those under his feet or the feet of the donkey that was gloriously entering into Jerusalem. Now there are many things here that we would like to talk about. His entrance into Jerusalem is significant because of the city being the city of David. The temple, although it was not built by David, but it was initiated by David. And David represents the king of kings, being the predecessor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ represents in a prophetic way the coming of the kingdom of God, that our Lord and Savior was often called son of David, son of God, son of man, but David also has a significant place in his life as the representation of the kingship. Nevertheless, I want to pay attention today to the fact that our Lord does not come into the temple as an earthly king. And that is one of the reasons why he comes sitting on a donkey, not on a horse. And in fact, there is a historical evidence that a Pontius Pilate entered into Jerusalem from the western gate of the city. At the same time as the Lord was entering from the eastern gate to go to the temple. Those are two parallel kingdoms or opposing kingdoms rather the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of heaven. Our Lord being the king of the heavenly kingdom, the king of the universe, comes into Jerusalem today on a humble donkey and is greeted by the crowds. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And most importantly, it is children who praise him and that's where we get the expression from the mouth of the babes and 
children who have pure hearts, they recognize his kingdom, they are glorifying God who is in heaven, and everyone is in a sense worshiping him, recognizing his kingship, his king, heavenly kingship. Now, it is very important to know and to remember that Israelites were waiting for the Messiah. And this is the Messiah that comes into Jerusalem. But that's not the kind of Messiah they were expecting. They were expecting the Messiah to be equally matching in his power to the one who entered from the Western Gate, the earthly oppressor. That the Messiah would be the one who liberates them from this local oppressor. But what they did not understand is the picture was much bigger, that the oppression was not the Roman oppression that mattered, but what mattered is that all of humanity was in sin, that all of humanity was captivated by the devil. And that's how our Lord and Savior begins his ministry in this world going into the desert and defeating the devil who is the prince of this world and it's in fact in one of the temptations the devil clearly tells the Lord that all the kingdoms of this world belongs to him and if in this situation the Lord would fall down and worship him then he would give the authority of all this world to him it is very fitting to hear that uh, my wife recently shared with me an expression from Charlie Chaplin who said that you do not need authority to do good things authority is usually used to do bad things for doing good things all you need is love and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells the devil that you do not worship no one except God, that the authentic authority lies with God, and only God has the authority on this earth over all the kingdoms and no one else, and that pretty soon he would be claiming the kingship to himself. And that is why today he enters into Jerusalem as a king, not as an earthly king, different than the earthly king. And what is the difference between his kingship and the kingships of this world? Is what he tells his disciples. He explains to them that their authority on this earth is exact opposite of the authority of all those who rule over people here on earth. And what is the difference? The difference is those who are in charge on this earth, they rule over people. They have people serve them. And he says, your authority should come with service. That you should do the opposite of what the earthly authorities are doing. You should serve those who are under you. So as the king of the universe, today our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes into Jerusalem on a humble donkey to manifest his humility and that his kingdom is here to serve. And that is what he does to his disciples during the Last Supper. Tomorrow we'll talk about the Last Supper as well. After eating the supper, he bends down and he washes the feet of his disciples. And he says, if you want to have part with me, you have to do the same exact thing. You need to bend down and watch each other's feet and that is one of the principles of Christianity I would say that is the central principle of Christianity which is humility humility is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ showed to us by his incarnation the king is not the one who sits in his palace and waits for people to serve on him is not the one who sits in his palace and he sends his military uh, personnel to fight his fights. In the early times of human history, the kings actually led their armies to war 
and they on specifically a distinctive horse took the charge and led and those kings who had self-sacrificial behavior like this were always victorious so that is something is revealed in the actions of our lord and savior jesus christ he encourages his disciples to be that kind of a leader who goes in front who takes charge but also takes responsibility and takes the most vulnerable spot in the leading position that he takes all the arrows in on himself that he draws the attention of the enemy upon himself and he saves his nation that is why the high priest prophesied on the day of the arrest of our lord that it is better if one one dies and the nation is not perished that the nation is saved our lord and savior as a king drew the arrows of the devil upon himself he embraced death for our salvation and that's the kind of king he is entering into jerusalem he is in our theology recognized as the king the prophet and the high priest he takes all these leading positions that have been practiced on this earth to lead humanity to his kingdom that he represents all three of them combined in one person but today mostly it is about his kingship as he enters into jerusalem on a donkey as a humble king who is here to die for his nation and that is very important to emphasize that the nation that was promised to abraham by the three angels three visitors representing the holy trinity in the very beginning of calling abraham and telling him about his mission to become the ancestor of the nation that will be larger and more members than all the sands of the earth is all of humanity and it is very beautiful that saint john in his letter today reminds us that we are the children of god that we cannot really feel it now but when he comes we will see our resemblance to him and that is how we we'll recognize that we are the children of god by our resemblance to our lord and savior jesus christ and that is what he said to his disciples as he comes on a humble donkey he had them pledge promise that they would function the same way with humility serving everyone who is entrusted to their care and that is the way we bear resemblance with our lord and savior jesus christ through our humility so dear brothers and sisters today our lord and savior sets an example for all of us to be humble like he was not to be like the earthly authorities and earthly powers but to be humble like he was and humility comes with service humility comes with sacrifice service comes with emptying himself and that is also shown in the incarnation of our lord and savior jesus christ who left the heavenly realm wherever heaven is wherever god is and came into this world and was born in a manger amongst the animals there was also a donkey that perhaps that was the same donkey that he rode into jerusalem i doubt it because this would be 30 years later and donkeys don't live that long but who knows if Simeon, the old Simeon, lived uh, over 300 years, if our Lord says about John that if I desire that he stays until the kingdom comes, what is that to you? So it could have been the same donkey that was present in his manger, and that is the donkey that he rode. And that is why the master of the donkey recognized who the person was asking for his donkey. Uh, I don't know, this is just my own speculation, but it is beautiful that the animals who greeted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could be the animals serving him to enter into Jerusalem as a 
heavenly king comes into the city of David. And the story says that he entered into Jerusalem, he went into the temple, and he looked around, and it was late, and he withdrew from there to rest. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord send his rest to you, because he is the one who calls us, those who are laboring and are heavily burdened, to come and he will give us rest. He will share his rest with us. He will share his kingdom with us. He will share his sonship with us, that we are also children of God, heirs of his kingdom, and humble servants in that kingdom, where everyone enters through humility, through love, through compassion for one another. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preparing today to his glorious resurrection, but first for his passion and crucifixion, he shows his disciples that he is king of the universe. May the Lord bless you and guide you all the days of our lives and make us the rightful heirs of his kingdom, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. God bless you and save you.